I think it's just crazy, you know, um, there's so much stuff going on now with Corona. Uh, obviously events are being canceled. It's effectively, it's, it's very, very much impacting the sporting world. Uh, there's, they're talking about um, canceling matches and seasons for football, for basketball in Spain. There's Spanish teams that don't want to travel to Italy. Uh, Italy is, a, as a country, uh, effectively quarantined because of the cases obviously in China, Iran. Um, so it's actually, it's a crazy situation. And um, obviously this is not the only epidemic or pandemic uh, in my lifetime, but it's definitely one which uh, seems to be being talked about more uh, and seems to become more serious uh, as time has gone on. And maybe we, uh, we originally underestimated it, um, but at the moment, you know, there's the quote from Angela Merkel, who said that 70% of Germany are probably going to get uh, the coronavirus. So, uh, you know, obviously that can be quite frightening, these kinds of uh, statistics or these kinds of things that people are saying. Um, yeah, it can be very, very frightening, very worrying, obviously. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think as a human being, if you hear of um, sickness going round, um, you do you do worry. You do think about people in your family who are more vulnerable. Um, you know, I think about my parents who are probably more vulnerable than um, than other people, or maybe my children. Uh, so whenever there's something like this that comes out, you obviously do you do worry. You do think about how is it going to affect them, and you you are concerned by that. I think that's the the normal response. Um, you know, some people respond by panicking. Uh, it's very easy to go into panic when you hear this. Of course, in the media, um, <laughs> everyone's talking about it. You know, we're even talking about it now. Uh, it's a big thing. It's it's in people's minds. They're always, always wondering. You know, <laughs> um, what's going to happen next? You know, is it going to going to get ramped up? Are there going to be even more problems? Even more cases? Even more countries being quarantined? You know, here in in Germany, um, as you know. Uh, you, you can't buy pasta in the supermarket anymore because it's all been you know, sold out. Uh, you can't buy toilet paper. So obviously all of this stuff, it's not just the virus that impacts you. It's not just the virus that impacts uh, society. It's, it's all the knock-on effects, you know, um, with certain areas of society benefiting and certain areas, um, you know, obviously not benefiting. Um, and even if I am not panicking about the virus and how it's going to affect me and my family, um, I'm affected by it because maybe I can't buy um, flour, I can't buy pasta, whatever, from a supermarket. So, yeah, it affects us all uh, greatly. I think that I've uh, seen different reactions. You know, there's some people who are shutting themselves away, uh, and when they do go out, they're wearing masks uh, and staying away from big gatherings. Um, other people have the feeling that it's completely exaggerated, uh, and they'll still go to, to gatherings. So. I don't know, I feel like with something like this, there's always like a middle way. You know, it's, it's very easy to, to overreact. It's very easy to panic and, uh, and to, to go to that extreme. It's also very easy, and I think by the way, it's a coping mechanism uh, to dismiss it and say, ah, oh, you know, we've had all of these other ones, it's not serious, I'm just gonna carry on my life as normal. And I think probably to be responsible, there's probably a middle way where you don't panic and you can help people who are panicking, but equally you don't dismiss it. And you say, this is kind of serious because there are people dying. Um, of course, people die from uh, car accidents. People die from other diseases. People die from cancer, from uh, pneumonia, whatever. Um, but I think that there's a good middle way to, to react. So I think there's a negative impact to the work and a positive impact. So I'll start with the negative first. So the work that we do, um, you know, obviously involves us speaking with people um, who are interested in knowing more about Yeshua, about Jesus. And if we can't meet with them because everyone is, is at home and, and isolating themselves, then um, that's going to make it a lot harder to have these, these good face-to-face -face moments. Um, obviously, we, um, we train people, we, we teach them the Bible. Um, if people are not willing to come to gatherings, that's obviously going to be detrimental. So I think that the, there is an immediate negative impact. However, I do think there is a positive side of, uh, of the coronavirus. And the positive side is it gets us to 
to think about what really matters in life, uh, to think about what we would what we would rescue from our own lives if we if we could. And I think it's it's actually a really great picture for for another problem that humanity has, but we're not really so aware of it. And so pandemics like these, like the coronavirus, actually uh, serve as good opportunities for us to to examine. Um, these other, you know, this, this other major issue in humanity that we don't really talk about. And that's the issue of, of what the Bible calls sin. And sin is a completely um, old, outdated, misunderstood word, but the concept itself is very, very relevant to, to our everyday life. Because sin acts very much like a virus, very much like a cancer, like an illness, um, in that um, it starts inside us, it corrupts our, every, our being, and then it works itself out in our behavior. So, uh, you know, um, things like what we would call today toxic behavior uh, is a result of, of, of what the Bible calls sin in our lives. I think the first step is to, is to define what sin is. Um, as I said, it, the word has a very, very religious connotations to it. Um, a person who hasn't grown up with any kind of religious background usually shrinks away from the word sin. Um, and people define sin differently. Uh, some people think that sin is a concept that religion has made up in order to control people. Um, you know, religion invents something that you're not allowed to do. And then when people do it, they, the religion says you're not allowed to do that and therefore you must be punished and will exercise control over you. So I think people tend to switch off with the word sin. So I, uh, I tend to, to not use that. I tend to try and paraphrase the concept of sin. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to do that is to look and see what the Bible says about sin because the Bible purports to be the word of God. Um, and, and so that's the best place to look for a definition of, 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 of this concept. So let's leave aside the word sin for now. And let's think about what the concept is. So in the Hebrew Bible, uh, there are three major words that are used for this concept. Um, one is chet, one is pesha, and one is avon. And they describe together, or, or, or they describe different aspects uh, of the same um, spiritual cancer, um, if you will. So uh, chet talks about um, the, the, part, the part of the spiritual cancer where uh, we don't meet the standard, you know, so like um, an example from uh, from our modern lives are if we're, you know, if we're going to go and buy a, a kebab or go, you know, go to a restaurant um, and we're sitting down at the restaurant and we see cockroaches walking along the floor, then that restaurant hasn't lived up to the um, food standard, uh, food, food hygiene standards of the country and they can actually get arrested, um, they, their restaurant can get closed down because they haven't met the standard. So chet is something that we actually know from everyday life. You know, uh, we know that from school, from if we don't pass a test, we know that from our driving test, if we don't pass it, um, that we haven't uh, fulfilled the standard. And in the case of the restaurant example that I gave you, um, it's actually crime. It's, it's a crime, it's a, it's a disservice, or it's a crime against humanity, um, uh, against the population and against this law that's imposed to protect the population. So that's chet. And then the second word is pesha. And pesha is um, when you go too far. So this is like trespassing. And you know, again, we see this in everyday life. Uh, uh, if you go to a factory or something, no entry, only authorized staff. And if you were to step in, um, then you've trespassed. Uh, and as we know, um, that results, that's again, it's a crime. Yeah, it's, a, it's a crime that is punishable by a fine, by imprisonment, depending, whatever. So we know about Pesha from, from everyday life, uh, when you go too far. Uh, and actually, another example of, of Pesha is uh, something like a murder, because uh, the law of, of the state of Germany says that you're not allowed to murder someone. And if someone were to, to commit murder, they're stepping, they're going too far, they're overstepping the line. Uh, and then the state reacts. And of course the state reacts to protect people because murder is wrong, it's a bad thing. That's acknowledged by every society. So that's Pesha. And then we come uh, to the last concept, which is Avon. And Avon is like um, a perversion or, uh, or a twisting of something. So when you take something that is, that is good and designed uh, for good purposes and you twist it. 
So um, one example of this might be fraud, defrauding someone, um, where you're offering, a, you're purporting to be one thing and you're actually something else. Uh, rape is also an example of, of Avon because it's, uh, you're taking something that, that is good um, and then you're perverting it. Uh, so we're aware of all of these and again Avon is, is a crime. It's a crime against other people, it's a, it's a crime against the state. So you have these three major concepts. There are other uh, words in the Hebrew Bible but those are the three main major words um, which define essentially crime. Um, and maybe when we think of sin, we don't really think about it as crime. We think about, about it as this weird religious concept. But essentially, it's crime against humanity. And as I said, in our everyday lives, we're aware of chet, pesha, and avon. We just don't really realize that. So it's a crime against humanity, crime against other people, um, punishable by the laws of the land. Uh, but it's also uh, a crime against God. And that's maybe where we don't, um, we don't really realize it too much because we're focused on our interpersonal human relationships and not about the relationships with the Creator. So I think it's really important to define what this problem is, this cancer. Well, in, in order to cure it, you have to realize that, uh, that you're sick. So um, I think the problem that we have as humanity is we don't think that we're sick. Um, you know, like I was talking earlier, there's some people who are ignoring the coronavirus completely. Oh, it's not a problem. It won't affect me. And um, we, we tend to think of ourselves as good people. Um, you know, we do good things. Um, we don't murder. We don't lie. We don't cheat. And, and so we make a, or if we lie, maybe it's just a small lie. And so I think the problem is we don't realize the seriousness of the disease that we have, uh, sometimes until it's too late. And so I think the first step to, to the cure is realizing that we're all sick, um, that we all have done things wrong, we've all committed these, these crimes, this chet, pesha, avon, maybe to differing degrees, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, if I break the law, I break the law. If I'm um, driving, if the law of the land is uh, to drive at 50 uh, kilometers an hour here in Germany in, in, a, in a town, and I do 51, I'm breaking the law, theoretically. But I'm also breaking the law if I drive 250. So, um, so the first step is realizing, actually, um, I do things that are wrong. I do things that are toxic. Uh, I'm disappointed in myself. I'm frustrated um, that I react this way. I make mistakes, um, you know, and that's everyone. everyone I think probably every day does some kind of chet, pesha, avon. Obviously not uh, to these extremes maybe that I've mentioned in, in the examples I gave earlier, but this is, what, uh, this is what we do. And we do that because we have the disease in us. We have the spiritual sickness where, um, uh, which we're dying from. And in order to treat the spiritual sickness, we need to realize that, uh, that we have the sickness and that we have the sickness because um, our relationship with God is broken. And we are therefore broken. And it broke because um, our first parents broke their relationship with God and, uh, and we inherited that. Uh, and so we're now in a position where, where we're a broken human race. We're living in a broken world where uh, we do broken things, but there's also viruses and natural disasters because everything is broken. Um, but thankfully there is a cure. And that cure is very simple. Uh, the cure is to, to come to God and ask him to, to completely cleanse you. And it's like an operation. Um, it's like an operation to, to change your heart. It's like open heart surgery. Um, and that's something that actually God promises us uh, in the book of Ezekiel uh, to, uh, to us as a Jewish people, that he will take out a heart of stone and replace it with a soft heart. Um, and, that, and God does that simply uh, through the Messiah. And that's why he sent him 2,000 years ago. Yeshua came and he died as a sacrifice, just like the sacrifices back in the day in the temple. Uh, he died in place of us. He was our substitute. Uh, he was perfectly righteous, and so he died for us. And the great thing is, is that um, he took all of our garbage that we do, all of this, this, this toxic behavior, this this spiritual sickness, he took it on himself. And he was our antidote. 
And thanks to him, he offers us the chance to have a new life, to have a new heart. And we just have to ask him to do it. And it's so simple. We just have to come to him and, and tell him that we've done wrong um, and that we need him, that we need the cure, that we're sick, we're desperately, desperately sick. We need the cure. And he will give it to us. He promises to give it to us. So that's why, that's why God sent Messiah to sort out a, 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 a spiritual cancer first um, so that we could be re reunited with him. You know, um, I love the way the prophet uh, Isaiah puts it in, in the Hebrew Bible. He says that um, God says that his ear is not too, too dull of hearing and his arms not too short to rescue our people. But we've like built up a wall because of the spiritual cancer between us and God through our toxic behavior and through who we are by our very nature. Um, but thankfully, through, through Yeshua, we have this chance to be healed, to be cleansed, and one day look forward to, to a world um, which is no longer broken. Yeah, it's really not a popular message um, in, in any country. It's not a popular message to, to tell someone that, uh, that they're sick. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I can imagine that it must be very, very hard to, to tell patients that they have cancer or that they're going to die, that they've only got a few days or months or weeks to live. Um, but it would be super strange to go to a doctor uh, where you have an examination and he tells you that everything's okay, but actually he knows that you're dying. You know, he would get struck off. He would not be allowed to practice. It would be considered malpractice because he hasn't told the truth. So. I think when we become aware in ourselves that we have the spiritual condition, um, yeah, of course we have to tell other people about it. It's the natural thing to do. Uh, and, and in my life, when I, when I realized that, um, and when I realized that Yeshua gives me this forgiveness, uh, this cleansing, and that he completely changed my life in one moment, gave me this soft heart that he promised, um, I wanted to tell other people. Um, Sometimes people, I think, misunderstand. Uh, you know, when you come to know Yeshua, you want to tell other people about him. Just like if I were to discover the cure for cancer, I would want to give it to people. I would want to give it to all of the people who I lost. If I discovered tomorrow the, the cure for the coronavirus, would I keep it to myself? No, of course not. Um, you would call me a sadist. So the same thing is, is true of Yeshua. When we discover our spiritual cancer, when we discover the cure for it, um, and when we take the cure and accept the cure, then it's, it's logical to tell other people about it. And of course, you're going to get some people who, um, who are going to give you a negative response. When I first heard that, that I have the spiritual cancer, I didn't react positively. It's a hard thing to, to introspect and to look at yourself and think, you know, is really everything good, what you do in your life? So, of course, you're going to get bad um, reactions. I'm sure doctors get bad reactions. I'm sure when, when these testers tell people, hey, you're infected with coronavirus, I don't think they're going to get a hug and a kiss, you know. Um, people are going to get upset, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how people react to me if I tell them about Yeshua. I just want to help people, and I want people to... Uh, to, to see this wonderful cure that, that God has given us. Yeah, definitely. This world needs hope at the moment. It's always needed hope. And there's, there's one uh, tragedy after another that, that, that comes. And, and I'm convinced that um, the coronavirus is not going to be the last pandemic that we experience uh, as a human race. That I'm sure there will be more and I'm sure that will be, there will be worse. Um, people need something to hold on to. Uh, you need hope. If you're, if you're hopeless in this life, if you've got nothing to hope in, nothing to look forward to, what life do you have? And um, so I think if, if you can reach out to other people and offer them hope, genuine hope that works, that changes your life, that is there for you uh, in the real dark times, then you have to do that. Um, just like there, are, there will be volunteers who will probably be volunteering to help uh, at medical centers to help process people for uh, coronavirus testing or whatever. Um, I think if, you, if you've experienced this change in your life through, through Yeshua, through Jesus, it's natural for you to want to go and, and help others and give them this hope that you have. Um, and I think that 
at times like these when we have uh, pandemics or whatever, uh, I think it pushes a lot of people, like I said before, to, to think about what really matters in my life. Why am I alive? Why am I here? What am I doing with my life? Um, and that can hopefully push people to see not only a physical sickness, but also a spiritual sickness that our human race has and that we desperately need a solution for, which is Jesus. I would just encourage people at this time, if you, if you don't know Yeshua, if you don't know Jesus, if you haven't experienced what I'm talking about, I just want to encourage you, look at your life. Um, take a good look at your life and see the areas where things aren't okay. Because there will be areas, because we're all broken. And, um, and ask yourself, what is the cure for this? Is it something that I can improve on myself? No. Um, maybe to a certain extent, but long-lasting change is, is not possible for, for broken people, uh, for us to do in our own strength. So I would encourage you to look at yourself, take a look at your life, take stock of why you're here, uh, and then to turn to God. Maybe you don't believe in God. It doesn't matter. He's still there. Um, and when you realize your brokenness and, uh, and when you realize that we all need to be rescued, then just, just cry out to Him. Uh, and in this time when, when you need hope, look to him because he is the only source of hope of genuine hope in this world that does not change regardless of what's going out on outside and if you do know yeshua then i would encourage you at this time to tell people about him give them the hope that you have when they're thinking about this when they're looking for hope because of this coronavirus give them the hope that you have don't keep it to yourself don't panic about the physical um, or the knock-on effects of this virus. Um, don't bury your head in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist. Um, let's have a measured response. Um, but let's have a response as believers in Yeshua uh, of, a, of a father who's looking after us, who's, who's guiding us and who's leading us. Um, and let, let this, this awful, uh, negative, horrible situation of a virus that's killing people, um, let's, let's, let's turn it for good. Let's, let's bring good out of this uh, and let God bring good out of it.